How does one please God? Hi, this is Daryl Chesser, and welcome to Sea Life. Today, we're going to talk about pleasing God. How do we please God? This is from a writing I did a few years back, and I'll be reading the majority of it, so I apologize for that. But I wanted to stay on point. So let's begin. Pleasing God. How does one please God? Psalm 147.11 says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. Those that fear him. I mean, you got to be afraid of God. Is that how you please him? Really? Maybe our understanding of the word fear is in this passage is incomplete. Let's look. Think about, for example, nuclear power for a moment. A power capable of massive destruction. A power definitely to be feared. On the other hand, it is a power capable of vast and almost limitless, limitless energy to light, to cool, and supply our industry and our homes with power, with no emissions, no carbon emissions, if that's your thing. In the first example, fear of, des of the destruction nuclear power is capable of can lead a society to greatly restrict and limit its use or its benefit. In the second example, when one sees the value and riches for the world in clean, limitless energy, their fear drives them to learn how to properly handle and respect nuclear energy. Their fear is not of destruction, but of not unleashing this vast power for good and light on the earth. So what has this got to do with being fearful of God. Hebrews 11.6 tells us, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is God, number one. And I believe also that he is merciful, that he is good, that he is loving, and also capable, of, of course, of great judgment. We see that in the Old Testament. And we also have to take into account, as the scripture says, that he is a rewarder a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You see, what gives God pleasure is when someone like you or I come to him knowing that we are not worthy or deserving, that we in fact are deserving of great destruction and judgment. But our hope for his mercy and grace, our, his undeserved unearned favor and forgiveness to unleash all of the promises of, and power of God in our lives and families com, and communities is greater than the fear of destruction. We have faith that we enter into his presence believing that we have already been accepted and approved. We want the benefits. We want the power. We want the limitless power available and promises available that Christ Jesus paid for, that God freely has given to us. Our fear of not receiving all that God can do drives us to learn how to properly approach and handle the astounding power of God. We move toward him in faith with no more fear of judgment and destruction because of his great mercy and kindness and grace. Others move away from him because they fear his judgment and destruction. They limit the power of God to unleash great abundance and great promises in their lives and families. They never take time to learn how to properly handle the danger, the destructive capability they fear. So how do we properly handle or approach this destructive force, this judgment, this, this God, powerful God without fear? There is only one way. It is the way, it is the truth, and it is the life. 
Jesus Christ is the pleasure of God. Jesus Christ, we are told over and over again by God himself from witnesses in the Bible that say they heard the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus Christ is pleasing to God and he is the pleasure of God. The hope of grace, that's what he is. He's the hope of mercy. He is the hope of glory for all who believe that he, Christ Jesus, is the proper way to enter the very presence and throne room of God without fear of judgment or destruction. I can add this verse there. Hebrews 4, 16 tells us that we can come boldly or without fear, into the presence of God in the name of Jesus Christ, we can approach the throne of grace and mercy to obtain more grace and mercy in the time of need. Boldly, without fear, we want the promises. We want every benefit that God provided, everything that Jesus paid for so dearly. I want to unleash all of it for the world, all of the divine nature, all of the promises of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 tells us that now is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Now, now, not tomorrow. Now the windows of heaven are open. Now is jubilee in your life. Now Jesus Christ is your savior. Now God is pleased with you because of your faith in Christ Jesus. As the apostle Paul said, I consider everything else as trash, as refuse, as dog poop, compared to the glory and the pursuit of Christ Jesus, the pleasure of God. God loves you. He has provided everything you need for life and godliness in Christ Jesus, his son. Let your fear of not receiving everything God promised become your zeal, your passion, your faith, your pursuit that make, moves you forward towards the presence of God boldly. Jesus Christ perfectly pleased his heavenly Father. And if you and I are in Christ by faith in God's grace and love, then we are safely and completely pleasing to God. So, will your fear drive you away from or toward the fear of not unleashing God's grace and love and power in this world? Or the fear of your own judgment and your own destruction drive you away? God loves you. He's pleased with you because you are in Christ. God loves you. God loves you completely. And if you're not in Christ, if you've not yet believed him, God loves you. And if you believe him about his son, that Jesus Christ came to this earth as a man, as a flesh, body, and blood, that he lived here and he perfectly pleased the Father. And he lived sinless because sin had no power over him. And he showed us the works of God, the healings and the feedings and the miracles and astounding teachings and the words of God himself. And we put him up on a cross. Jesus laid down his life voluntarily, pleasing the Father. It was God's good pleasure that our, sal our Savior, our captain of our salvation, should suffer and die for us. He took our place and yours. Now, do you want to be pleasing to God? Do you want to unleash his unlimited potential and promise and the grace of Jesus Christ around the world? Then receive Jesus today as your pleasing the Father. When you're in him, when you believe what God said about his son and the love he has through his son to the whole world, when you believe and receive that, you have perfectly pleased the Father. So pray with me today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come today and I ask you to forgive me for my sin, 
to wash me clean by everything Jesus did, by his body that was ripped apart on that cross, and by the blood that was shed, and the death, and the tomb that he went to, and then your resurrection back to life of this Son of God that pleased you, Jesus Christ. I declare today, Jesus Christ is my Savior. He is my pleasing the Father. He is my Lord. And today, Father, I come into your presence boldly with no fear any longer because I know you love me. Thank you and amen. Hey, if you receive Jesus Christ today, awesome. Welcome to the family of God. Get your Bible and read. Start with uh, John in the, in the Gospels. Read it two or three times, man. The Holy Ghost will begin to speak to you and lead you and guide you. And find a good place to go that's going to teach you about Jesus Christ. That's what's important because that's what pleases the Father. Thanks again. You guys go out there knowing you're pleasing to God. Yes, you. <laughs>